Welcome to uh, East Union Mennonite Church's building. And in case you think you lost your way, and it seems like some of you may have lost your way from the town of Washington, I am not Joel Beachy. I'm Nick Detweiler Stoddard from Washington Mennonite Church. Uh, last week, I think you had Michael Schwarzenegger from Whalen Mennonite Church. So you're getting all the Southern folks this month. Uh, I am up here this morning along with Joel Beachy and a little bit later, the uh, Vacation Bible School kids, because we, as a set of congregations, Washington Mennonite Church and East Union Mennonite Church and a few other friends, got to collaborate together as we have done in recent years on our VBS. And you, you all here at East Union, uh, as part of the East Union congregation, have been our gracious hosts, and we are excited to join you here this morning. So if you're from East Union Mennonite Church, I'm excited you're here. I'm glad you're hosting us. If you're from Washington Mennonite, I'm excited you're here. I'm glad you get to be hosted and worship with us. If you're from another congregation uh, in the area and join us for Bible school, we're excited and glad that you're here. If you're on Zoom, uh, each week you here at East Union have at least a handful of people, some of them even regulars who are with you, and we're glad you're with us on the computers. Uh, even though I grew up in this area, uh, went to Bible school here when I was a kid in the 80s and the 90s, grew up at Lower Deer Creek Mennonite Church and Kelowna Mennonite, there are still many of you who are familiar faces to me, and yet I don't always know your name. So sometimes I will see you and say, hello, with a recognition, but I don't always know all of you. When we gather together as two congregations, there may be very many familiar faces, but you may be a little bit shy on the names. So I'm gonna invite you, since we are a blend this morning, to stand and in Jesus' name, greet one another. And don't just assume that you know their name and they know yours. I want you, even if it's obvious, to share who you are with that person, to save them the embarrassment. So stand, greet one another in Jesus' name, and say who you are by name. The body of Christ is made up of all kinds of little families, little households, little congregations in their specific locales and places, and in this era, sometimes even online. And it is good for us to be together regularly, but it's also good, as with any family, to have extended family gatherings. And this gives us the chance to have something of an extended family gathering in the Washington County, Johnson County area of these two and more Mennonite churches. So we are as I said, glad you're here. Would you pause with me a moment as we are gathered as God's household in God's presence? Would you pause with me for prayer? God of every place, Kelowna, Washington, Iowa City, Iowa and beyond, some of us have come here today and see you from mountaintops of joy and confidence, mountains of gratitude and praise. Some of us have walked in this morning and seek you from our valleys of grief or doubt, valleys of loss or simply exhaustion. And in all the places where we come from this morning, there you are with us, nudging us onward, walking into this place with us, already here ahead of us. When we descend from the heights, show us your presence on the ground. And when we rise up from the depths, show us the light of your way. And our worship today with these adults and with the children, meet us all on the path made by Jesus. We are confident you are here with us in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said, we are gathered here this morning uh, to celebrate some of the work that, the, East, uh, that the, the Bible school kids and teachers have been doing. There were around 40 kids in this space on Friday and Saturday morning, and a number of them will be up front. There was about 25 to 30 of y'all helping uh, as teachers, as music leaders, as people in the kitchen and activities. Uh, so it definitely took our villages to have this happen. The theme this week you see still on the screen, Seekers and Sneakers. And as a Bible school, we were focused through uh, four different uh, stories of Jesus on seeking, seeking Jesus' way in our lives. The kids heard uh, stories in their classrooms and here in the worship sessions of Jesus as a boy, 12 years old, asking questions. They saw Jesus uh, calling disciples from their work, from their nets, uh, to gather people together. 
Jesus invited us to ask questions and gather people together. Jesus taught us from the Sermon on the Mount up on the mountaintop to be light, uh, as he is light for the world, to be light and shine light for the world. And at the end of the day yesterday, the Bible story, the focus that our kids were, were working with was that Jesus, who is our Lord and our teacher, also stepped down and does some of the, the, the dirty, hard work among us. Uh, Jesus steps down and washes stinky feet and serves those who are in hard places, and he sets an example for us to serve and love others. Today in our worship, we'll be focused around the last day that we didn't get to in Bible school, and we'll be focused on the passage in John 21, uh, where the disciples are having a hard time coming to grips with Jesus' death and resurrection, and Jesus comes along in that hard time as our helper, as their helper. So that'll be our focus today. Uh, Throughout the the two days, the kids were focused on seeking Jesus, seekers and sneakers, and they got to do things like worship a couple times a day, go to their classrooms, they got to run outside with clues, they got to geocache, and actually kids, if you're here, there's one more geocache that you can do after lunch today, so you have to listen at the end of the service to, uh, I think Joel Beachy, Pastor Joel, will share what the clue is for the last geocache. Remember, parents, uh, kids, you can take your parents with you, and when you get to the geocache, cash is not money, it's a box, C-A-C-H-E, cash, a hiding place, and there will be something in there for you, but we want you to go with your parents if you can and sign your name on the sheet like you did all week. Uh, That's something you've been excited about, and we hope you can do that again after lunch. Joel will tell us at the very end of the service what the clue is for today. Any other adults in the room can also go looking for it if you really want. Uh, It's an exciting little uh, seeking in sneakers or sandals or whatever it is you're wearing today. Uh, We are grateful in a few moments to hear from the kids. Uh, They'll be sharing some of the song, a couple of the songs they worked on. The words to remember, a Bible memory verse from John 13 about Jesus inviting us to follow his example. And you will also be invited to join in some of that and also to join in the offering that the kids joined in. This Sunday's offering and this weekend's offering was for the Kelowna Food Pantry, and so there'll be an opportunity passed in the pews for that in a handful of moments. Uh, But as we continue on in our worship, as we prepare to hear from our Bible school students and hear from Joel in a sermon on John 21, we first want to pause as congregations and uh, give thanks to God through song, call one another to worship. Um, And before we get to song, we're going to do a call to worship together. This is from Voices Together 854. You can join on the screen or turn in your purple hymnals. Join me. Some of us are exhausted. Some of us are curious about Jesus. Some of us are hungry. Some of us are disoriented. Some of us are broken. We gather around you today, O Christ, O Christ. Grant us your peace. Amen. I invite the musicians to come forward and lead us in a set of opening songs. And you may take up your purple hymnals or see the words on screen from the voices together. Hello, I'm Warren Yoder, if anybody's asking. Um, and it's been a joy to be part of the music um, this week or this Friday and Saturday with the kids and everyone involved at Bible school. And we're gonna sing a lot of songs that we did this week and you're gonna learn them as well as we did. This morning's gathering hymn is, we'll open with number 11 in Voices Together. Number 11, Mountain of God. And let's rise in body and spirit, stand as able. Number 11, Mountain of God.
remain standing, our next song of gathering will be number 166. Number 166. Your love is washing over me. 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 And I won't be frightened anymore. Your mercy is washing over me. Your mercy is washing over me. Your mercy is washing over me. And I won't be frightened Introducing ourselves and saying names, I forgot to also mention that Warren Yoder and Angela Widmer and Erica Detweiler are helping us and the kids with music this morning. Uh, as we worship together in song and in prayers and in greeting one another in fellowship, we also bring uh, the work of the congregations, the work of our churches into our worship time, sharing with one another ways we can join. Uh, East Union has a tradition at the beginning of the service, uh, separate from some of the uh, other prayer requests, the more personal things, of having announcements. So uh, I'm going to have on screen and read for you a few of the announcements to be highlighted, particularly from East Union Mennonite. And then if there are others that were not listed or others from Washington or later on, those of you on Zoom, uh, Joel will bring you a microphone and you can share those. Uh, as you'll see, some of the uh, East Union Church Life Together announcements. The first, as Joel mentioned, or somebody mentioned, maybe I mentioned, uh, today we are East Union and Washington Mennonite Church together and we can stay for a potluck. Uh, there will be uh, dishes for all, there's enough for all. Those of, that, that may be gluten or, or nut or dairy free should be labeled and you can find those in the kitchen. That way those who uh, can make use of that can find it. Uh, next Sunday on August 4th, East Union's worship service will begin at 10 a.m. And there'll be Courage Ride activities at 11.30 a.m. So you can join in preparation for the 20th annual ride, honoring the life of Seth Bailey. The weekend later on following that, Saturday, August 10th, Putt, Putt, and Barn Party from 5 to 7 p.m. in the evening. Uh, and food and outdoor games at Jerry and Lou Miller's Barn following next Saturday, August 10th. And then that Sunday, the day after, Sunday, August 11th, again, your service here at East Union Mennonite, starts at 10 a.m. There are no summer second hour activities and you are encouraged to use it as a time to connect with your Sunday school class or some other group. In the week following that, on August 16 to 18, Camp East Union will be held here on Friday evening instead of Saturday evening this year. There are flyers in the East Union mailboxes and you can sign up for Friday evening pizza at this uh, URL or on the bulletin board down near the library. That is August 16th to 18th. And then there's also in the community, uh, Pathway Christian School has a benefit auction and barbecue meal on Friday, August 2nd uh, for the Ozark Wilderness Boys Camp. And the last handful of announcements on screen. In general, both congregations actually can join in the Mennonite uh, Central Committee School Kit Challenge and bring supplies. I think there are lists in your various congregations to help make 24,000 kits in August. It's a drive by Mennonite Central Committee. You can see uh, East Union's bulletin, or uh, if you are at Washington Mennonite Church, you can pick up a sheet from Mary Lou for packing school kits this month. 
And then lastly, both congregations, but specifically East Union, is asking for Sunday school teachers for fall. For those of you at EUMC, you can sign up on the sheet below the mailboxes or invite a friend to join you. If you have a question or would like to talk further, contact Betsy Slaba or Jill Hamashanda. Those are the ones we have written. If you have something that didn't get included or popped up this morning, if you're here from Washington or from East Union, raise your hand. Joel will come to you. This is Janet Geyer. Just to add to our second hour next Sunday, the Courage Ride um, prep, Jackie and Karma Bailey are going to just talk a little bit about how it all started and how it's evolved. And then we'll help put um, the supply boxes together for the rest stops. And uh, so there's really activities for all ages to join in and Doyle will finish. Yeah, and then if you have a bike that uh, doesn't shift, doesn't break, has a flat tire, go ahead and bring it and I'll, I'll bring tools and an air compressor and uh, we'll get everybody fixed up to go Courage Ride. This is Kyle Troyer for the trustees. Um, progress has more progress was made on the doors this week the door guys came and brought the post for the south door so it has been installed and i moved the key card reader so if you come during the week to get in with your card it is now on the post not on the side of the church and so that will remain there permanently now um, there was another problem unforeseen with the door, so they had to order some more parts. So it'll be at least a couple more weeks before the handicap part is operable. Looks like we're good. Uh, the Zoom folks do not have any announcements. I invite us to hold these, this work of the church in our, in our hands. I want you to hold out your hands. All these things, we, sometimes it feels like lots of details lots of little things, lots of dates, but they are part of the way we join God's work. Would you hold your hands in front of you as I offer a blessing for this work we do? Lord, we seek to lay one brick at a time, take one step at a time. Sometimes it feels our, our, our minds are over full and we can only just do one thing at a time in this present moment. But we know, God, that in all these announcements and the work of your churches, that you will take them and you will multiply them just as Jesus multiplied the fishes and the loaves to feed and nourish many. May this be so with our work here in our congregations. Amen. I invite Heidi to come, and she's going to gather the Bible school children up here for a portion of sharing our uh, Bible verse and songs. All right, so all the VBS kids who are here with us this Sunday, please come up. Find your spot on the stairs with your class. So as everyone's getting their spots, what you see up on the screen are the words to remember that we practiced um, during Bible school. They are Jesus's words from John 13. And part of the fun in, of Bible school is that we get to be pretty silly and quite loud often. Um, and repetition helps us learn and remember. And because we are all um, seekers and sneakers, whatever our age, we wanted you guys to join us in practicing these words of Jesus to remember. So the oldest um, class, you guys can stand up. They made up some motions to help us remember some of the words. So we're gonna go through, we're just gonna go through one time. We invite you all to join us and to follow these motions as well. All right, ready kids? Here we go. You. They're going to take their spot, and then we're going to do it another way. It's a call and response. Um, again, please join us. There are two slides. We'll just go through it one time um, and be prepared. When we practice this one, we just essentially yell the entire thing, okay? So 
Kids, can you do it the loudest ever that you've done it? What do you think? Let's try. Okay, here we go. You, you call me teacher. our Seekers and Sneakers song for you. This was our theme song this year. So you can join in if you want at some point, but watch the kiddos for the motion. My Lighthouse, and we encourage any of you who know it to join in.
one we'll be doing is Like a Rock, so you can join in on the motions or the song. offering project was to collect monetary donations for the Kelowna Food Pantry to provide a visual for the kids. We had a shopping cart and each item represents five dollars donated. So at the end of yesterday we had donated 91 items for a total of 454 dollars. So way to go for your generosity everyone. In just a bit we'll take another Bible school offering going toward the Kelowna Food Pantry. If you'd still like to donate to our regular offering, there's a basket in the back. Thank you. 757, there's enough for all. Thank you for your generous gifts and as the as we prepare to hear the scripture story i invite you once they're up here to pause and bless these gifts with me jesus of love and leftovers sometimes we struggle with what to share and how much is enough sometimes as in your stories we are the disciples quietly suggesting you send the needy crowds away sometimes we are the crowds bringing only our desperation and desire to be close to you. When we have very little, embolden us to share what we have. When we have nothing, welcome us to simply stay and receive and eat. In giving and in receiving, we participate in the miracle of enough. We pray that these gifts for the Kelowna Food Pantry would help provide enough for families in our community. Thank you, Jesus, for these gifts and for this work. 
Amen. And now the reading, the acting of Scripture, John 21. Andrew, James, John, do you want to come fishing with me tonight? Sure. sure, we didn't get any fish today, so having a big catch would be great. Okay, let's go. The boat's over here. All right, let's head out. Let's row out to the deep end over here. John, let's try that side first. It's almost midnight, and we aren't catching anything. I know. Let's rest a bit. Then we'll row out to deeper water. I'm sure there are fish out there. I've caught tons of fish here in the past. Come on, look, the sun is coming up. I can't net cast this net anymore. I think I'm falling asleep. I know, an entire night of fishing and not even one fish? How is this possible? Let's head back to shore. I guess you're right. I'm sorry. I thought for sure we'd have a big catch. You're really good friends to come out here with me all night. Children. Don't you have any fish? No. Even though we fished all night. Cast your nest to the right side of your boat, and you will find some. Are you kidding? We were casting on both sides. I can't do this anymore. There's so many fish. I think our nets aren't even going to break. I made breakfast for you. Bring some of your fish that you caught, and we can add it to our meal. Let's count the fish. One hundred fifty-three fish? I can't believe this. Oh, it's amazing. Come have breakfast, James. I know how hard you worked all night. Thanks, Jesus. I'm so hungry. And you know how much I love fish. Good morning. So good to be worshiping with all of you this morning. I've been wondering, have you ever had a mountaintop experience? If you were to describe what that was, what a mountaintop experience is, I wonder what words you might use. If you're familiar with the 70s uh, uh, singer-songwriter John Denver, you may recall the song Rocky Mountain High quite literally as a song about being inspired and amazed by the beauty and majesty of the Rocky Mountains, the awe-inspiring wonder of giant snow-capped peaks, forests, rocks, and streams. For me, I guess I would describe a mountaintop experience as a moment in life when you feel completely at peace, uh, a true sense of serenity, a time when you may feel closest to God. Often to me, these, uh, these experiences or these moments happen in nature but they can also happen when I feel extra close to humanity, to other people. Swimming in a deep mountain lake or stream can bring these kinds of feelings to me, laying on the beach, 
hearing the ocean waves, all of those experiences can help me feel closer to God, sort of a mountaintop experience. But I've also experienced it at uh, Vacation Bible School 30, 40 years ago. I remember coming to this space, this place, and people gathering together and putting in lots of effort and time and energy to make me believe that we were out in the wilderness or in the desert places or following in Jesus' footsteps. I remember at camp being exposed to campfires and sing-alongs and and roasting marshmallows and, and campouts and getting to know other kids. Think about it when we would go to like a, uh, events like convention where thousands of youth would gather together and sing and praise God, join in one voice. I don't know if it's unfortunate or not, but I feel like it's, it's sort of a hard thing to deal with in this life that we're not usually afforded the opportunity to remain in our mountaintop experiences. You know, they're, they're sort of fleeting. Maybe it's because when you get up to the mountaintop, it's at 14,000 feet, and if you get altitude sickness like me, then you can't stay there very long. You gotta get back down. But we often have to live our lives in, um, you know, our lives kind of get in the way. Our everyday lives stop us from feeling like we're on the mountaintop. You know, there are bills to pay. There are schedules to keep. Our mortality reminds us that we often lose the people we love too soon. The reality is it's always too soon. Things in our lives change. Life moves on, sometimes in ways that leave us feeling uncertain. In our scripture passage this morning, we have the story of the disciples going out to fish one last time. In John's gospel, Jesus had already appeared to the disciples several times. Mary Magdalene encountered uh, the risen Jesus at the empty tomb, if you recall. The disciples encountered Jesus in a locked room behind closed doors, and Thomas was able to place his finger in Jesus' hands and the marks of the nails and in his side where he was pierced. But now the disciples seem to have returned back to the regular rhythm of everyday life. Jesus' death and resurrection has happened and they've gone back to what was normal. And so Peter, sitting around with the other disciples, says, Hey, what should we do? What are we, what are we doing now? Let's, let's go fish. Let's go back to what we know, fishing. So uh, at East Union, in my sermons, oftentimes I have a side note. And, uh, and so for Washington folks and other guests, this is my side note for today. You know, our routines and habits, they kind of help us sometimes. They kind of help propel us day to day. You know the routines, right? You brush your teeth. I don't know if you count how many times you brush or if you get all the corners or not, or how you put on your deodorant or, or hairspray or whatever it is, how you tie your shoes, eat your breakfast. You know, I found that if I don't do some of these things, these routines, if I don't keep them, then I end up losing my keys and my phone like I did a week ago. Our routines and habits are not necessarily bad. Most of us have them a regular time that we wake up in the morning. We have a routine of getting cleaned and dressed for the day. We may eat a variety of breakfast uh, items, but if you're like me, it ends up usually being pretty standard, cereal, milk, maybe a banana, some coffee, maybe a, a little more coffee, maybe a thermos of coffee, maybe a cup of coffee from the Kona coffee shop, just to tie me over. These routines, they, they, send, uh, they send us signals. They remind us of, of where we are placed, where we are at. They ground us. They remind us of who we are or have, who we have been. But sometimes there's this problem of going back to the safety of routines. Even if they are rooted in spiritual practices, even if they're good things like centering prayer or reading scripture, Sometimes our routines become, uh, make us complacent, stagnant. 
satisfied with where we are in this life. Sometimes they help to make us feel unwilling to shift or change or grow or learn, unwilling to let go of the things that bring us comfort, even if it may mean overlooking the needs of those around us. Sometimes our willingness to return to what is safe and comfortable limits our ability to experience the mountaintop. And so that's the, I would say, the, the, the trouble in the text is that our routines get in the way. They stop us. They put blinders over our eyes about what is going on, how God is showing up. But there is grace. There is goodness. Even when we return to what is comfortable, Jesus seeks us out. So kids this week, uh, we're learning to be seekers, but if we know who Jesus is, we know that Jesus is also seeking us. Jesus is our helper. He seeks us out. Trying to look for Jesus in all sorts of places, sometimes we find him, sometimes we don't, but what is so amazing about Jesus is that he shows up where we are at. Even if you return to your boring old routine of everyday life, Jesus can show up if we allow ourselves to see him. John 21, starting at verse 1, says, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net over on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Sometimes what we experience in plain, old, boring, everyday lives becomes extraordinary when we have the eyes and ears to see and to hear. Because Jesus shows up. The disciples went back to what they knew, and Jesus found them. Even what they knew failed them. I always think that is kind of the interesting thing about the story, right? These, these guys did fishing for a living. This is what, who they were. They were fishermen, and yet they can't catch fish. But even when that failed them, Jesus finds them and shows up in, a, in an incredible way. Their knowledge and their skill in the story are not on display. It's not about who they are. It's about who Jesus is. How often do you feel inadequate in what you do day to day? If you're like me, there are many times when we can find ourselves in situations where we don't feel like we have what we need. Not enough information, not enough skill, not enough uh, expertise to feel useful. I'll give you a quick example, another side note. I like golfing. It's amazing and so humbling. You can play it all your life, and you can really stink at it. You can spend a lot of money on a lot of equipment and still never birdie a hole. See, our skills, even our abilities to seek, are not what help us to encounter Jesus. It's our willingness to recognize that he is already here with us now. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. I love this story of the disciples encountering Jesus and what they knew and valued, fishing, in fact, it is only in the act of fishing, a return to what had been central to the disciples' lives, that they recognized Jesus. We often get caught up in the fact that there was this miraculous catch of fish, this 153 fish. I don't know if that's a lot or not, but they said it was a lot, right? 
But I think the disciples' recognition of Jesus in the mundane, in the ordinary, in the everyday is what is extraordinary. In Luke's gospel, if you remember, there's another story of the disciples who encountered Jesus on the road to Emmaus. They have this heated discussion. Um, Jesus overhears them and, and uh, starts to question them about what they're talking about. And they, they get frustrated because they are expressing their sadness, their disappointment in the death of their friend. And the disciples fail to recognize him. It isn't until they invite Jesus into their home and he breaks bread with them. They sit down, they eat, that their eyes are opened and they recall and suddenly they see Jesus for who he is. I think Jesus seeks us in the ordinary and we like the disciples will find him if we allow ourselves to see the unexpected. So I don't know about you, I'll, I'll be honest. For a moment. I long to be the one who seeks Jesus. You know, uh, this week the kids were learning about geocaching and this is a, you can get an app and there are locations all across our area. You can even look it up and there's, there's places just right around here, like just a couple miles away. And you find these boxes and you, 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 when you find it, you open it up and you write your name into the box and it's this, sort of this uh, competition for yourself. Right, And we would love to have a GPS locator to find Jesus, where Jesus is at. The harder the trail, it seems like you know, almost the more certain we are that, that Jesus will be at the end of it. But so often Jesus doesn't show up in the lofty and glamorous places where I expect him to be. Instead, Jesus shows up in the ordinary places of life, the humble, average, and everyday experiences of our daily work and our daily bread. And we find Jesus this way. We seek him and we find him. Vacation Bible school is a place that I find Jesus. Joint services together is a place where I find Jesus. The simple practices of us showing up to church on a Sunday morning. One day, you know, this might all look different. We might not sit in pews and we might not come to a building, who knows? But showing up for each other, together, Jesus will be there. We've been called, we've been invited into relationship with him, with each other. We have been invited to participate in God's kingdom, you know, the upside down one, where even the ordinary and the mundane spaces of our lives is where Jesus shows up and they become extraordinary if we have eyes and ears to see and hear. Jesus' very presence among us. My friends, siblings in Christ, we have been challenged to seek Jesus. May we have the humility to find him everywhere we are, even if it is in our church pews on a Sunday morning. May it be so. We are going to take a little time to recognize all of the many, many people who helped make Bible School possible this year. Um, I was part of the planning crew from East Union, and I just really want to say a special thanks to Washington Mennonite for partnering with us for the second year in a row to do Bible School. It's really a gift to do this together. So I'm going to name kind of groups of volunteers, and please stand if that category applies to you. I will end with asking our students to stand again, and then we'll give a big round of applause. So the planning team from both churches, if you could stand. All of our teachers, teaching assistants, Seaside Exploration Station Art and Science leaders and helpers, helpers, uh, Mountain Movers Recess Crew, the kitchen staff, the snack delivery guy who's up top, I think, anyone who donated food or made snacks in advance, the drama crew, the tech and sound folks, the Signs of Hope crew, and anyone else who helped with setup, decorations, cleanup, or somewhere else. Look at all these people. All right, and now kids, if you could stand. You were an absolute joy and delight to seek after Jesus with. We're so glad that you could come. 
we are blessed to have spent this special Bible school time with you. Let's give everybody a big. You may be seated. And next we have what we call at East Union signs of hope. This was a practice that began during um, COVID when we weren't able to meet together. Um, people were invited to look out for signs of hope for places they saw Jesus um, during the week and to send those photos in. And then they were compiled. Um, often music was added and a lot of times sort of a theme arose from those pictures. Um, so this is a practice that we have continued and today our signs of hope video is going to highlight our Bible school experience. So enjoy. God's love around. If I'm following Jesus, when I clap my hands, gonna spread God's love around. When I sing my song, la di da for Jesus, I spread God's love around. If I'm following Jesus, when I sing my song, gonna spread God's love around. When I twist back and forth, back and forth for Jesus, I spread God's love around. If I'm following Jesus, when I twist back and forth, gonna spread God's love around. When I jump, 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 jump for Jesus, I spread God's love around. If I'm following Jesus, when I jump, 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 gonna spread God's love around. When I do, 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 dance, do, do, dance for Jesus, I spread God's love around. If I'm following Jesus, when I do, 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 dance, gonna spread God's love around. When I serve my brother, I'm serving Jesus, and I spread God's love around. If I'm following Jesus, when I serve my brother, gonna spread God's love around. When I love my sister, I'm loving Jesus, and I spread God's love around. If I'm following Jesus, when I love 
love my sister Gonna spread God's love around When I live my life, my life with Jesus And I spread God's love around oh, yeah. If I'm following Jesus when I live my life I'm gonna spread God's love around I'm Gonna spread God's love around Jesus is a friend, he's a friend next to ya. Jesus is a friend, so sing along. Jesus is a friend, he's a friend next to ya. Jesus is a friend, so sing. Sing a la 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 Ending song today, we're going to sing number 845. Number 845, it's called Buana Awabariki, and it's a blessing song. And you can't sit for this one because it's you have to just sing it with all of your strength. So if you will stand, if you're able, number 845, the words are Buana Awabariki, Buana Awabariki, Buana Awabariki, Mi Le Le. We will sing it in the Swahili first, and then English, and then Swahili, and then English. You may be seated. Just a couple of announcements really quickly. Um, so everyone is invited to stay for the potluck. Even if you didn't bring uh, um, table service or you didn't bring a dish, please stay. Uh, there, there are plates and, and things available and I'm sure there will be plenty of food. 
So my seekers and sneakers, as uh, Heidi mentioned, there's a special announcement um, after the meal. So you have to go to the potluck first, but after the meal, there will be one last cache, the box, to find, and it won't be hidden until after the potluck. Um, so eat first, but the cache, it'll be hidden somewhere in the building, and your clue for today is fish. Okay, fish. And if you're having trouble finding the cash box, um, Ben Coons in the red in the back of the sanctuary, he will give you a hint. Okay, so I'm going to pray for our meal and then we'll have a benediction and then we'll be dismissed. So let's pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day that you have made. We thank you for this gathered body of believers, of seekers, of people who are discovering uh, what it means to be community together. And we ask that you bless the food that has been prepared and the many hands that have uh, made the meal. And we ask that you, our fellowship and our partaking, breaking of bread may be honoring to you in all that we say and do. We ask this in your name. Amen. Now receive this benediction blessing. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find Knock, and the door will be open to you, for everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Go in peace.